Imagine, if you will, a world where humans are ruled by the dead. Vampires, zombies, ghosts, and the like are kings, and humans are their servants. Of course, this kind of world is imaginary, right? Of course, when someone is dead, they stay dead. No afterlife, no souls, just the lifeless husks of meat and bones that used to belong to somebody. But this kind of world, where humans are ruled by the dead, isn't so far from the truth. All humans are fascinated by the dead. This morbid curiosity has been with humans ever since humans existed. Even before written history, Neanderthals were already performing ritual burials. The oldest burial site is about 130,000 years old and can be found in Krapina. Skulls and jewelry there suggest that these burials were controlled, they were thought out, and even included cannibalism. In ancient Egypt, a single tomb for a pharaoh took about a quarter century to build. These tombs were majestic, filled with gold, jewelry, and artifacts that the pharaoh would need in the afterlife. Some even included a courtyard for the pharaoh's soul, but our morbid curiosity can be seen way before that. The bodies of the pharaohs had to be well preserved, through the process of mummification. Mummies are a hallmark, a defining piece of ancient Egypt. When you see a mummy, you think Egypt. They would start the mummification process by either liquefying the brain or pulling it out through the body's nose with a hook. They would put the body in natron, a salt, to dehydrate it. Finally, they would wash it and wrap it in linen bandages. Mummification may seem like a thing of the past, but we even see cases of it in recent history. Even the Catholic Church has mummies. If a body would not decompose soon after death, it was seen as incorruptible. This, of course, meant that the person was a saint, and their body was preserved with wax. There have been literally 100 saints preserved this way. There's even a place in Italy called Cisa dei Morti, the Church of the Dead. In it, you can find the preserved bodies of 18 people, and they were all put there in 1833. A church where everyone is dead and it's been attracting people for generations. Ever since the dawn of religion and possibly before that, humans have thought that death was a transition to the afterlife. Nearly all religions that have ever existed believe in a continuous life after death. We have been obsessed with not only questions concerning our mortality, but with dead bodies in general. We still hold ceremonies when someone dies, not only to mourn, but to celebrate their life and ours. Bodies get cremated, their ashes put in an urn, and kept with a loved one. But burning bodies hasn't always been about the death of a loved one. During the Holocaust, thousands of inmates were sent on death marches. They would walk to the woods, get killed via gunshot, and their bodies burnt. Thousands perished in this way. The ashes and smoke rose into the air and spread across the planet. Probabilistically speaking, you're made up of some of their atoms. So think about that while you try to sleep tonight. Many cultures around the world practice the veneration of the dead. Veneration of ancestors is quite prevalent in Madagascar. This has led to the widespread tradition of tomb building, as well as the Highlands practice of the Famadahana, whereby a deceased family member's remains may be exhumed to be periodically rewrapped in fresh silk shrouds before being placed back in the tomb. Misfortunes are often attributed to ancestors whose memory or wishes have been neglected. The sacrifice of Zebu is a traditional method used to appease or honor the ancestors. Small everyday gestures of respect include throwing the first capful of a newly opened bottle of rum into the northeast corner of the room to give the ancestors their due share. It's not only that the dead have been revered and praised throughout history, but many former kings and leaders have even been deified. The Egyptian pharaohs, for example, were seen as gods in their culture. The Egyptians believed that even after death, a pharaoh would lead them. 
This is why the Pharaoh's burial was so grand and completed to perfection, to please him in the next life and ensure his immortality to protect his people, a dead leader with political power. This kind of system, where the living are ruled by the dead, is commonly referred to as a necrocracy. In TV, card games, board games, and every other aspect of popular culture, necrocracies are seen as undead governments, where things like zombies, liches, and vampires are heads of state. Angmar from J.R.R. Tolkien's world is ruled by its witch king, a wraith. He had a few lesser ghosts under his command, but his forces were mostly hillmen and orcs. The batshit insane Helmicrons from Animorphs, for example, are led completely by the dead. Not the undead, the dead. They believe that the most important thing for a leader is that they make no mistakes. So as a result, every Helmicron in a position of authority is ritualistically executed as soon as they're elevated to their position. Sadly, those things aren't real. So the most we can do is have a dead person with political power holding an office, and being internationally recognized as one of that country's politicians. In 2010, Carl Geary ran against Barbara Brock in the mayoral election of Tracy City, Tennessee. A month before the election, Geary had passed away due to a heart attack. The story was covered and discussed many times before election day, so most, if not all of the town knew that Geary had died he still won with an overwhelming lead. Geary had taken the election 285 votes to 85. Perhaps it was out of respect, but one person was quoted saying, I knew he was deceased. I know that sounds stupid, but we wanted someone other than Brock. Geary obviously didn't get the position. But even today, we have the closest thing we can possibly have to a true necrocracy, North Korea. Christopher Hitchens famously referred to North Korea as a necrocracy, and ever since then, people have been referring to it as such as to insinuate how completely and utterly ridiculous their government is. While Kim Jong-un is their leader, by all practical purposes, their eternal leader is his grandfather, Kim Il-sung, who died in 1994, still listed as the chairman of the republic. His son, Kim Jong-il, still holds office as well, even though he died in 2011. He's the general secretary for the Workers' Party of Korea. When Kim Jong-un dies, it is likely he will be seen the same way. Maybe sometime down the road, we'll see North Korea turn into a necrocracy. But that's unlikely. Even though North Korea is a place where the dead can have political power, there are still plenty of positions for living people. More people have died than are alive today. For every living person, there are 15 people that are dead. Most of human history is lost. We don't know anything about any particular person that lived before written history. And when we die, people will still remember us. And as the generations pass, less and less people will know who we are. If you happen to be one of the lucky few to have their own Wikipedia page, or write a novel and are immortalized that way, your memory will last much, much longer. But we really die when someone has said our name for the last time. We're only here for a little while. So thank you for being here with me for a little while. And thanks for watching. Hey, welcome to the end of the video. Before I go, I just wanted to say that if you like this video, make sure you check out my upcoming book, An Alien Named Jesus. It's about how our morbid curiosity could have played a role in the establishment of religions. So make sure you subscribe to stay tuned. And also, we just started a Patreon. So if you like what we do and want to help us support it because science knows we need your help, the link will be in the description below. And once again, thanks for watching, and have a great day.